But, you know, in terms of like sitting down and being like, this is my album and this is a story with A to B and yeah. to C and like, this is my first time doing this since Raw. And yeah. it's, it feels, it feels so good. Uh Hi, it's John Ali and today we are on track with Simon Curtis. Oh, hello. Hi, babe. Hey, how's it going? It's going really good, and I'm so happy to be here with you. I am so happy to be here myself. Not a lot of people know this, or they do, if you know me and if they know you. Yeah. We go way back. Way back. Way back, way back, way back. We met, like, just through, like, like I guess my blog and you were getting ready to release music. Yeah. That's yeah. how it started, right? Yeah, it was, like, back in 2010 when I was getting ready to release my album. I think you were one of the first people I sent it to. That's amazing. My first album, 8-Bit Heart. 8-Bit Heart! Yeah. Where you at, boy robots? <laughs> <laughs> back in the day, yeah. Had a, when you look back at that time, like, like what is what comes to mind like first? I mean, there's so much nostalgia, and it's so funny looking back because you know, like, the mold of an internet do-it-yourself pop artist didn't exist, and I was just kind of like winging it and just putting stuff out, and now that's just kind of like. That's a it's a model like yeah. there, it's it's a job and there are so many people doing it so it's you know more than anything I look back and I'm really proud of myself that yeah. I like kind of had the foresight to do it like almost like ten years before it became a thing. No, yeah, I feel like you really like grab you like grab the hell of it of like doing it yourself like yeah. literally all by yourself. Yeah, like the planning the visuals and like the whole like release of everything. I mean, your album was put out for free. Yeah. I was really proud of myself, you know, and it was so funny because one of my best friends, Andrea Lewis, who I did a Nickelodeon musical with, That's right. one of her good friends at the time, she always told me about him, because this was in like 2008, and she'd be like, oh, my friend Aubrey, he's making music and, you know, like he's putting out this mixtape and da 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 da, and like that's Drake. Yeah. And I was so <laughs> inspired by that, and it was like, and it was in 2009 when I was making ape at heart and I was so inspired by it I was like wow that's such a good thing to do like mm -hmm. you put out music for free and it just like gives you a fan base because people hear what you want to do and like what you're capable of making yeah and so I just I was super inspired by that like before Drake was Drake so that that was like my biggest inspiration of and I mean it the, the way that it took off it's that it was like a great reaction. Yeah. I mean, the, it, there was like a big online like fan base. That yeah, I, I, got, I got I got like three worldwide trending topics on Twitter. It hit like a hundred and fifty thousand downloads in just like two or three weeks. It was really really wild. And it was it was wild. And like, have you noticed that all those people that that like stuck with you in the beginning are still here now? Yeah, it's been, it's amazing. Like uh, all of my core fans are still there. Yeah. Like, it, it's you know that's. That's my income, you know, yeah. like now, you know, with streaming and things like that, like, and it built up over years, but like, that was one of the big reasons that I even, you know, started to believe in myself again to make music again, was just because I saw how much it swelled over the years and that it turned into like an actual business. Yes. So it's, yeah, they're all still there. But you've been on a musical journey for, I feel like, a long time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, definitely. It's gone through waves. It's peaks, been a journey. Peaks and valleys. <laughs> yup. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, like, because you had released a second album. Yeah. And then you kind of took a break a little bit after that. Mm-hmm. So what, where was your headspace at that time? After my, my second album, Raw, it was, you know, it was really crazy. As you said, I did everything myself. I, you know, I didn't have a manager, I didn't have a label, I didn't have anybody helping me with anything. And when I put the second album out, I was talking to a manager and, you know, he was kind of waiting for permission from his company to sign me. And he, after the album charted on Billboard, because it debuted at number 20 on the, da on the Dance and Electronic Albums chart, yeah. he got the go-ahead to sign me. And I, you know, I thought that that was like, okay, this is it. Like, like I have yeah. a real manager now, and yeah. I'm, you know, like, this is it. And, you know, we kind of shifted into that space of, like, well, you know, the industry isn't really open to you right now, so let's kind of backdoor this and start having you write with all these producers and kind of position you as a writer first and then kind of backdoor attack your artist career. 
And so we immediately kind of shifted into, you know, like six to eight months of me just doing sessions with all the different producers in town, writing for other artists. And after that period, I, I, I got dropped by the manager yeah. and it was like, this kind of devastating thing for me. And at, at the time too, I had, um, like, I remember one of my last meetings that I went on with him, we had a meeting with uh, one of the presidents of a really big publishing company. Mm -hmm. And like, we played all these songs that I had made and she was just freaking out for them. We had the best feedback. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the meeting, she was like, I would love to sign you, but I mean, I just have to be honest like most of my producers are really kind of just like these like dude bro like macho guys and like typically i she's like i just don't think they would be really comfortable in the studio with somebody like you and i was like oh okay wow. and she was like so sorry yeah yeah and then it was like a few weeks it was like two or three weeks after that that the manager dropped me wow. and like i that was just like a devastating thing. No, that's like, that's like one thing and then it's the other. And yeah. then it's like, all right, like how many more can I take? Yeah. And so I, I went into, I went into this, I went into this kind of space where I, you know, I got really depressed and I was in, you know, I was like, I, I was like 23 or 24 at the time. And yeah. I was so vulnerable to like those voices in yeah. my head. And at that point I had put in so much work and I had, you know, I made two albums and I had made this like... Yeah, like you had a, like stuff to back everything that you yeah. were doing up and you were still being like told... And I wish I had the, I wish I had the foresight to, you know, I, you know, and that's one of those things where you kind of have to like go back and talk to like the younger versions of yourselves mm -hmm. where you're like, just keep going. Cause yeah. I had, you know, and I do have like, you know, all those same gifts and all of those same things that I want to do. And, you know, so it's kind of, it's interesting, you know, to kind of look back and be like, no, keep going, kid. <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, it's all there and it doesn't, like, this is just bullshit. It doesn't matter. Just keep going. Yeah, but that's understandable. Like, yeah. you were, you're putting yourself out there in, in such a intense and like, very like vulnerable mm. s state. Like, you're literally your heart is into this music, yeah. like everything's in it. And then there's like other outside voices telling yeah. you like, mm. but I'm grateful for it now because yeah. it makes me appreciate everything yeah. that I do so much more. And it's also a lesson that I can impart to younger people too. Just like, yeah. keep going, keep, keep doing going. your shit. Yeah. You know, if you have outside voices telling you these, you know, these things that are just bullshit, like fuck them, just keep doing, keep doing you, keep yes. doing the things yes. that bring you joy. Exactly. And you have been, yeah. and I mean, you, you have, you've written, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, so, and that's interesting too, because, you know, like those, those kind of roadblocks that you perceive as roadblocks, you know, kind of, you know, change your avenue, change your path a little bit. And so I don't know if I ever would have gotten around to writing my first book if it hadn't been. I know. I was so I'm, at, you know, I'm, there's so many reasons that I'm actually grateful for the path that everything has wound up taking me on because, you know, I, I've been able to do so many different things that I, I love and I'm so grateful for all of it. Yeah. I mean, that, I mean, that's like a whole different level, like, like music and then like having like going to a bookstore and like being like, I, that, don't think. I know that's why <laughs> that's you know that's something like I I I wrote that first book because an author friend of mine I had lunch with him and you know this was this was right after A Bit Heart came out mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so you know so this was 2010 yeah and he was like so when are you writing your your book yeah and I was just like oh wow well that's you know something I would love to do when I'm older and you know that's something like that's like a pipe dream and he was like. <laughs> you already started writing it. Like it's in that album. Like yeah, you've yeah, already yeah. started. And I was like, you're right. Oh my gosh. And so I just, you know, I went from, went for it. And you know, it's, yeah, going into Barnes and Noble and seeing something there on the shelf with your name on it is like. That's crazy. Yeah. Like if I, if I could tell my third grade self <laughs> that, I, it's like, it's, it's amazing. And now is there a plan, like do you, is there something that you still would like to continue to pursue? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm writing the sequel to Boy Robot right okay. now. But no, I also just sold a graphic novel series what? to Legendary Pictures. Oh my god. So that's called The Witches of Silver Lake. And it's like about this group of like young queer kids in LA who all have magical powers. So I'm really excited about that. Oh my god. Do you have any like tentative dates for any of that? Not yet. To be determined. Yeah. Well, that's exciting. Yeah, I'm super excited about that.
Oh so yeah, God. so I'm writing a lot of stuff in addition to music. Yeah, you're. Yeah, I mean, hello. You have like all these projects <laughs> coming out. Damn. Like, when do you have time to do the music then? <laughs> <laughs> but no, you, you. I mean, you just kind of have your, I guess, comeback per se. Yeah. In a sense, with love. Yeah. And how does how did that feel to be like? I'm ready to get back into this. Like, was there like a conscious decision? Like, I'm gonna do this again, and then I'm ready. Oh yeah, like it. You know, it took it because I I started working with the producer who I'm working with now, Danny Garibay, um, under kind of the guise again of writing for other artists. Okay. I was like, I'm dying to make music again. You know, I'll go and I'll I, I love Danny. I'll go and like we'll do some sessions and make some stuff to pitch to other people. And we started working on a few songs and. It was like four or five months into that process of just kind of like cataloging demos that I realized I was like, I'm writing songs for myself. Yeah. Like, these are just my songs. Yeah. And so I sat him down and told him and I was like, I think these are mine. Like, I think that's what's happening here. <laughs> and he was like, I think you're right. Oh, wow. And yeah, deciding to do love, it was just like, it was so clear that that of all the demos that I'd made, that that was my next single that had, it had such a special energy to it and was such this statement that I needed in my soul and even getting back into the studio again like it's so crazy the weird kind of blockages and sort of isms that we like give ourselves mm -hmm. like I went into the studio to record the final vocals for that like on the verge of an anxiety attack like wow. being afraid that I wouldn't be able to like record again uh -huh. and I went in and I it was like the best vocals I've ever recorded and wow. I was like well shit this is just like bullshit that's like going through my head I don't know like why do we do this to ourselves yeah yeah um so no more than anything it was just kind of like this really good opportunity to kind of like stake a claim for my sense of self so it was it was a really beautiful experience making that song was that the first of all, like you said, you had about four or five demos, you said? Mm -hmm. And that was the one where you're like, this has to be the one yeah. that we finish. Yeah, that was the one that was like, this is the, this is like my return to Simon Curtis music. Like, this is it. Uh, but I mean, it, it, you, the way you talk about it, and then like the actual product of the song, you do hear that. It feels like sort of like a release, mm -hmm. like, like a big release from you. It was. It absolutely was. Yeah. It's like a soul release. Yeah. Like, it feels like all the music that you have done up until um, that point and then with that song, I felt like everything had just exploded into that one beautiful song. Oh, well, thank you. No, I'm telling you, like, when you first, because <laughs> you sent it to me early, I got an exclusive first listen. Always. Um, I was like, I was like shook, because I was like, this doesn't sound like you, but it yeah. does sound like you, yeah. and it's like, I was just, I was just more so like, just happy and like, proud of you. Oh, well, thank you. No, yeah, I was like, this was, this was I was so excited. Well, thank you. And I'm like, that. just glad it's out to the world. <laughs> and the reception was, has been so good. Yeah, the reception's been, the reception, you know, to that single has been great, you yeah. know, more than anything, it's just inspired me to put out more. More, yeah. You know, so I'm, I'm in the middle of working on an album right now that's gonna be out in the fall, and, like I have a single coming out in a few weeks. It's That's a double right. single. By the time um, this video probably is out, it'll probably be out. So yes. let's let's talk about this. It's like a double. It's release? a double. It's a double single. Yeah. Okay. It's an A side and B side. Okay. And A side is graduate, Wait. and B side is rainbow. Okay. So let's talk about the songs. Yeah, I I should I should probably go play them for you. All right, I'm, we're gonna close to them, and but I also want you to talk, <laughs> yes. talk, just talk about it first. <laughs> Um, well, so graduate, you know, I feel like I feel like we've even been talking about it in this conversation. Graduate is just kind of like an anthem for evolving. Okay. It's you know, there's a lyric in it that's like. No, I can't think of it now that I'm sitting in an interview. But there's a, <laughs> there's a you know there's lyrics in it that's like we're done with the bullshit. Like it's time you know it's it's time to graduate. It's like I'm ready, ready to, go. to go up in a way yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, and it's like it's it's so much like an anthem for like that growth that we go through in finding ourselves and in releasing all those blockages. And, you know, like we were talking about this before the camera started rolling, but like, you know, turning 30 and getting to that place mm -hmm. where it's like your return of Saturn and you realize that like all those weird obstacles from your 20s were just bullshit and they yeah. didn't actually exist. They only existed in your own head. Mm -hmm. So that song is really an anthem for that. And Rainbow... Rain the word rainbow was my first word. Okay. Like ever. We have it on video of me saying my first word while I'm taking my first steps. Oh my really? Word, yeah. That's... 
and the word is rainbow. That is so symbolic for so many things. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. And you know, that song, it, 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 like there are times, you know, cause I do a lot of my songwriting when I'm driving. Okay. Um, driving is like weirdly a place where like songs just always pop into my head. And it was one of those days where I just didn't have any music on and I was driving on the freeway here in LA and all of a sudden I just started singing this song. And it, uh, like I just started crying and I just sang this whole song and I pulled out my phone and I just started singing it like through my tears wow. and I, I like by the end of it I was like oh my god like this is my song mm -hmm. and this I, I, I wrote the song like three years ago okay. so it was before I was even like working on music for anybody again or like for myself like yeah, even yeah, considering yeah. it and so the song is like the song is like three years old now at this point, but it, you know, I, it was it so, through, like, yeah. no, I never even recorded, like, oh, I wow. kept it, I kept it hidden and, you know, it was just for like you. my, yeah. for me, my song. Okay. And it was only after we had finished Love and we were about halfway through Graduate, I played it, I played just like this demo vocal I'd recorded on my phone to Danny mm -hmm. and he was just like oh wow yeah so we're doing this like yeah yeah okay and and then it, it's interesting too because Casey Musgraves came out with a song called Rainbow that's right and you know the album Golden Hour you know I've been she's been like uh, my favorite artist for the past like five years yeah now. yeah, yeah. and like when that album oh, came yeah. out, it was just like that changed my world. Like I was back in the studio working on music again. And that, when that came out, I was just like, oh my God, like this is what music can be. Yeah. And like, there are so many moments where like the artists that you love just kind of shift your perspective on the stuff that you make. And that was one of those moments. And, and even have like, even listening to her rainbow was like, it, there are times when people come out with songs that like share a similar title or things yes, like that yes, where you feel yeah. like defeated. Like mm -hmm. you're like, oh man, like now I can't that, do that. Yeah, and in that it was just like, oh my. It, for me, it was like a sign. It yeah, was like, yeah. No, I gotta do it. Like that. Like Casey no. was like, go ahead. Sis. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it felt like it was just like, oh wow, like that's that's a sign. Like I gotta yeah. do this. So yeah. that's that's kind of where that took me. And you know, the song is like. It, if there if there was any song that I could say is my favorite song I've ever written, it's it's my rainbow. Oh wow! It's just it's such it's such an important song for me. It's I feel like it's an important song for you know anybody who's you know like queer kids. It's yeah. for you know it's for it's for that's who it's for. Like it's it's for people who were born different, have felt different, and you know and and not like a trite or saccharine way, but like, it's really, it's it's kind of like a poem to that kind of sense of self-love that certain groups of people really have to like, go through some shit in order to find. Yeah, I mean, it's, and it makes sense now that you've told me like, what these songs are about, mm -hmm. that they're coming out together. Yeah. Because they're very like, they seem like, they go hand in hand, yeah. they're like a yin and yang, like mm -hmm. they, they're mm -hmm. very symbiotic in that way. Like they, and even listening to them back to back, like it, they're, they're kind of a pair. Okay, so that makes sense. Yeah. Because I always wonder like when, why people release two songs at once, or, mm -hmm. but that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Now what, what it's like, what are like the sounds coming from, like what are these songs are going to sound like? Well, Graduate's more of a bop. Graduate's got like a summer vibe. Um, and Rainbow is acoustic guitar driven. Okay. Um, it's, you know, it, there are moments where I allowed myself to kind of go into that country space that really inspires me. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, I, it doesn't sound like country because <laughs> I just don't sound like that. Um, but it's it, it definitely draws in, inspiration from yeah. that. Like we have yeah. kind of like really like atmospheric soaring electric guitar it's it's like all live instruments like it's okay. it's, it's not like any of my other music i was gonna say this yeah. sounds like it's gonna be something fresh and different from yeah you. it definitely it definitely is but it was exciting to go there just like as a singer and a songwriter like That's amazing it, yeah it was good to kind of be able to go to that space where i've you know been so inspired 
like in the time that I released my last album, so much of my taste in music has shifted in so yes. many ways. Like, you know, Fleetwood Mac and Casey Musgraves are my two most listened to artists in my time away. Yeah. So it was really, really just invigorating to, you know, go into that space. No, that makes sense. Like, just as we get older, like our just taste just changes yeah. and like it's perfectly fine to adapt to it. Yeah. Um, but do you, do we, are we expecting like, maybe like some visuals for these songs or it's like this is the music that we put out and that's the focus right now i'm i'm working on that um you know for me it's always it's always like that's always been kind of the one place where i like i'm kind of like i i, I need more cooks in the kitchen to yes. like you know like that's yes. that's a space where i really always like crave that collaboration um so it takes more time for me in in that regard um but yeah definitely especially once it gets closer to the album coming out yeah sure. so that's tentatively planned for the fall yeah and are we getting is it like would you say it's somewhat of a concept or overall there's a oh definitely a theme? yeah definitely like, okay definitely because i know you very much are like that that and that was even you know like when i released love i was like i'm gonna do a year of singles like i just want to okay. do like every other month like just a single drop and then like we started working on graduate and i i just realized i was like I, no, I need I need the full album. Like I, as a writer, I crave the full story. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I crave like I want to be able to make those Janet intros and interludes. Oh my god, like, please do! I know, like <laughs> I love, like I love just like, and it takes it that allows me the freedom to get weird. Yeah, like wh when I can just be like, what if we did this thing where I'm like talking, and then all of a sudden like there's like four layers of harmonies that sneak in, you know, like that I, and I, my brain can't go there when I'm just making singles. Yeah. Like there's a weird pressure if you're just like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm going to make a single. Mm -hmm. Like it, you know, at least for me, I feel stifled in that way. So to even get to a place where I had released love and then that allowed me to say, no, I'm going to make an album. Like yeah. that's what we're going to do. Yeah. Like that. So even that was just like another layer of like liberation. And that was it just you and Danny? Yeah. Oh wow. So it's just you two. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So I'm assuming like you fully, you guys get each other. Definitely. Like he's, he's been so incredible to work with. He's like, you know, when I first met him back in, I, I met him in like 2011 okay. and he, I actually cut the vocals with him. Um, you know, WWW, right? Yes. Okay. So a few of the songs on that, he cut the vocals for, oh. like he cut the vocals for Berlin wall okay. and what other song on there? Another, another song on there. Um, he didn't produce them, but like, that's how I met him. Was okay. Like I needed somebody in LA to help me cut these vocals. And that's how I met him. And like when I first met him, his music is super alternative and it, like, so it's, it's been interesting to like know him for years and to both of us kind of get to a very similar point in our careers and lives so we've just been able to connect on like a friend level that's like been okay. really really special for me well that's nice yeah you guys are aside from just creating yeah. something that you guys are gonna be able to call your own and it's gonna be out to the world yeah you're like genuinely like good friends yeah and like and and i you know he's also somebody like i'm i'm super spiritual and like he's somebody that is able to just like totally go to that space with me so like some days we'll show up to the studio and it'll just be like three hours about us talking about like dreams we had the night before and the significance and like just like our lives and have like these like deep therapy sessions but like it allows you to go to another space when you're writing yeah. music so i've been super appreciative of that and like really grateful that i met him and i'm able to work with him now oh yeah that's amazing yeah well then i'm excited for this upcoming album then i'm i'm so excited to we got these two songs yeah. that are going to be released now are these going to be the last two songs we hear before the album or will there be like more? I'm still debating. I think there might be one more. Okay. I think, I think, I think there might be one more. Okay. So we'll have one more, possibly one more yes. song before it. Yeah. And then a full project out. Yeah. How's that going to feel for you? It, oh God, like giving birth. It always feels like giving birth, but man, it's like, I don't know when it, it when it's like that built up for so many years and it's just like, I, I'm going to just cry. No, cause I'm it's, just going mean, to cry. How many years has it been since Raw? <laughs> I, I, that Raw was 2011, so it's been eight years. Ah! I know. That's a long time. I know. It's, it's, it's wild to think about it, but I'm, I'm so excited. No, yes, you should be. Because like even WWW, like that was just a collection of songs that I wrote in that period that I was yes, telling you I about remember. when I was just working with producers. Diamonds. And, 
Yeah, uh, diamonds on the dance diamonds floor. Diamonds on the dance floor. Yeah, I, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, so, and 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 like, oh my gosh, I love so many of those songs. Some yeah, of those songs are my favorites. But you know, in terms of like sitting down and being like, this is my album, and this is a story with A to B and yeah. to C, and like this is my first time doing this since raw and yes yeah. it feels it feels so good oh i'm excited because yeah. i mean that's like a, you have like a different perspective in the sense that like you truly are like down to your core like yeah. a writer yeah and you infuse that in everything that you do you yeah. do and it's just it's like it's just nice to see because it's, it's like in this climate there's so many uh beautifully talented queer artists and their mm -hmm. perspectives are so different mm -hmm. and the fact that you've honed in on yours and you're like you're celebrating it and it seems like you've you really like are like letting yourself just be free in it. Yeah, it's exciting, and it's, and everyone's gonna be hearing it so soon. Yeah, I'm excited. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you so much <laughs> for uh, talking with me. Oh my gosh, of course. This has been on track with Simon Curtis, legend. Mwah. Thank you. Bye. Oh, wow.